Minister, um, we are running up now. I want to ask what recommendation uh, you are a senior lawyer who is well read and also have been a judge in the Gambia. And now, what recommendation are you giving to the government and to the armed group in terms of protection <coughs> of civilians? I, what are the recommendations you are giving? No, I cannot give recommendations to the armed groups because uh, traditionally these are ghost authorities. You don't talk to a ghost. I can only speak to the government that is duly constituted to protect and guarantee security. And my message to the government is that they should engage in sincere dialogue. The problem in this country is a clash of culture, a clash of, of, uh, of cultural values. You just had a major national dialogue in Pakistan. Are you seeing that? I, I am saying that if you look at the participants, I was a participant at the national dialogue, but you would see that a, a, a sizable and important uh, a, 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 a chunk of the stakeholders were not there. When you come and dialogue with me, <laughs> you dialogue, I dialogue with the government, CPDM, SDF, that's not a problem. The core cause of this issue, the, 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 the stakeholders are known. If the government were to engage dialogue with Cho Ayaba, who is known, Akwanga Ebenezer, who is known. Ekomesako. Ekomesako and all those figures, you know, Chris Anudem, they are known. These are the kind of people that the government should dialogue with. When I talk about dialogue, I'm take, talking about sincere dialogue. Our country is facing a crisis. We cannot restore peace. We cannot talk about security of the person. We cannot talk about national security without dialogue, engaging in some very sincere dialogue with these people. Take out, how do they call this man, Sisiku from prison. Take out a Yambe from prison. Take out Barista Shufai from prison. And all, possibly all political prisoners. Take them out and engage in constructive dialogue with them. Why, why did they go underground? That is the question. And I think that once that dialogue is hard, in let me even say one thing. The, the, the recommendations of the national dialogue have not even been implemented. <laughs> when we argue that magistrates of French speaking expression who do not master the common law should not be allowed to practice here, they imposed on us the present Procureur General, who is uh, a French trained <coughs> magistrate with no knowledge of the common law. He sees the common law as a fiction. He's, to him, the common law is a fiction. Get me very well. And that is why we have a breakdown of the rule of law in the Southwest. Because from the Napoleonic system of, 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 of law, you know, it is the Procureur General qui a le pouvoir. In the common law concept, it is the courts. And so I just gave you one direct example where you see the PG calls a bench magistrate to his office to give him instructions. When the proceedings are ongoing. When the proceedings are ongoing. I'm saying something that happened in my presence. Verifiable. Me, I'm the eyewitness account of that. And, and, and then you see that there is a, truly a clash of culture. Okay. And that is why I'm saying that if we are able to hold constructive reasonable uh, in fact i even followed at one time there was a, a, a process being led by the pm by the prime minister some canadian canadian talks that were ongoing we thought that that was going to bring a solution to this problem but again it got okay barista hooked up somewhere. So, so that is what so i'm your recommending appeal is yes. that the state should engage in frank honest and genuine dialogue. on the line the the, the, the the kind of talks that they were engaging with the Canadian authorities. Okay. Yes. Our Dr. Mabel.